What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. And uh, to be completely honest with you, I wasn't going to do a video this week. It was supposed to be a short week at home before we left for Bonneville. Our flights kept getting pushed back because the weather kept changing in Bonneville. And right now I'm home for at least the next 12 hours, I think. But since I'm here and I kind of have the day free, I wanted to get something done so I could get something up on the channel and make some progress on the car. About a week and a half ago, uh, my buddy Sean, who's also coming on the rally, came over and we got some stuff done on the car. I didn't film it. Uh, I wasn't really in the mood. It was one of those nights where I was just like, you know what? When Sean comes over, I just want to get stuff done, get it out of the way, and just make progress and not worry about filming stuff. Because if anybody on here films videos, you'll know that if you're working on a car and filming a video, it takes working on the car twice as long. I swear, every time. So yeah, I wasn't really in the mood to film anything, and Sean came over and we just got some stuff done. So I'm going to show you guys what all we got done. So in the last video, I showed you guys how sketchy the seatbelt setup was on that. Those are still sketchy. Uh, I'll get new ones for that. But what we did when Sean came over was a bunch of dash stuff, which needed to get out of the way. We pulled the glove box out. Sean was able to uh, pull the entire dash harness out without pulling the dash, which is, which is really nice. I didn't know we could do that, which is awesome. Pulled the old dash harness, ran the new dash harness. We pulled the inner part of the heater box, which goes right there up against the firewall. Pulled the speaker out along with the trim that went with it. Uh, the clock that goes right here. And I sent that off to a place in Wisconsin. And they should be getting it back to me next week. Also replaced one of the switches. This is actually part of the controls for the heater. So currently it's it would be an off position. And then you can actually get a clicks. That would be fan, fan one, two, and then that's high right there. And then you pull for temperature. Still not 100% sure what that means. If you pull for heat or you pull for regular air, not sure. But over here, we have this is for defrost and all that stuff. So you pull this out, and we figured out that's for defrost. That directs air up there, which goes right there. Which also, I got new parts for. Let me show you those. Okay, so this is the inner heater box. So if we're looking at it from like sitting down in the car, it would be like that. So right here would be the angle of maybe sitting in the passenger seat, because this will be underneath the dash right in front of you. You'll probably see the lower half of it. And then this goes over to the center of the dash right there. And then we have ducting that sends it up to the defrost and then down to the feet right here. So the down to the feet one is actually the ducting that we found in my mom's attic last video. And it goes under here. Let's see, it flips around like this. And just like that. So passenger side shoots there that way, driver side shoots there that way. And then we did not have a defrost duct. It wasn't under the dash, it wasn't in any box in my mom's attic or anything. So I ordered one. Here we go. This basically looks like an attachment for a shop vac, but this goes under the dash and sits just like that and directs air up to defrost. And you actually see right here, this is where one of the cable attaches right here. And right there, defrost is on. Defrost is off. So pretty simple. Nothing's vacuum actuated. It's all, it's all these levers and cables and everything. So it's not too bad at all. And then up here, I'm pretty sure this diverts air either like this is open and that lets air pass through the heater core or this is open and that either one. But we got this all situated, got the heater box out. We got the old heater core out, which is right there, actually. That's the old heater core. As you can see, it's seen better days. New heater core is in, new seals are in. We are good to go. And a new resistor right there. Also, the radio. Let me show you the radio. So this is the radio that came out of it. See how big that freaking thing is. Also, something I didn't realize till we were pulling the radio out is these knobs right here. These are for like a 65, 66 Corvette, but the radio itself looks like it's for like a 63. So these knobs are not correct. The radio, I think 63, 64 looked really similar. So that's all right, but look at this freaking honking thing. Also kind of cool. That's my dad's name. Obviously he bought it somewhere and they wrote his name on it for whatever reason, but that's, that's his name, Paul White right there. And let me show you that compared to the new radio, which I think is, there it is. Da -da -da. So firstly, they look really similar as far as the gauges and everything go. That's exactly how it's supposed to look. But this thing's three inches deep. That thing's a freaking honker and it's heavy as hell. This thing's pretty relatively light. This is all digital. Like we went over before, it's got Bluetooth integration and all that stuff. 
Sean and I went over the wiring, and even though I hate wiring, and this looks confusing to me, we went through it, it doesn't look that bad. So regular stereo wiring, as Sean says, so shouldn't be too bad. Ooh, the speaker setup. I don't know if I've shown you guys the speaker setup yet before. So it's normally a single six by nine, and here I got twin four inch kicker speakers, which go right up there. So this should be a little bit more acoustically dynamic, I guess they say, than just a single speaker. Should sound pretty decent anyway. Oh, and cool little thing. Uh, this is the screen for the Holly EFI system. It's a little three and a half inch screen. And I was trying to figure out a place to mount it. And I went online, I was like, Holly Sniper three and a half inch screen GoPro mount. And I got something on eBay. So this is 3D printed. Got it from a guy on eBay. And it has a GoPro kind of two prong mount so you can attach it to a GoPro thing which is, this is my cell phone mount, but this is how I'm gonna mount it. That's gonna go on the windshield, and then the screen goes right in there. Just like that. So not too bad, pretty cool. Another cable thing that we found here is the fresh air vents. I legit did not know what these went to originally, but these are fresh air vents. This one goes to that side, it's in the corner there, and this one goes to this corner here on the driver's side. Passenger one works exactly how it should, even bolts up and everything. Driver's side one does not work, and this is broken off anyway, so that's, that's on the way. That should be getting here sometime next week, I hope. I tell you what, guys, there's two things I'm really excited about for having the car done. Number one, First and foremost, car will be done. I'll be able to drive it as much as I want. It'll be reliable. I'll get to go to the rally, all that stuff. And I'll be able to actually enjoy the car. That's first and foremost I'm most excited about. The second thing I'm most excited about is not spending so much freaking money. Every time I come out here and I don't work on the car, but I look at it for more than five minutes, it costs me money. So every other day, I have an order into somewhere for a couple hundred dollars and I can't wait to not have that expense. I can't stress it enough. Really, really excited to drive the car once it's finally done. But also not spending money would be huge plus. I took out the cluster in the last video. And since then I've taken the cluster apart and we've made some progress on fixing quite a few of the issues. It is inside of my office right now. So let me take you there and show you everything that we're doing, everything that's wrong, everything that we're fixing, all that stuff. All right, so real quick, this is the original dash wiring harness that Sean pulled out last week. It has the fuse block right there. These are the attachments for the two wiring harnesses that go into the engine bay. And then everything else is connectors and lights and stuff that illuminate the dash. And I think like 20 or 21 of these attachments, lights, connectors, all that stuff, go to just the cluster. Just the cluster gets like 20 or 21 connections. It's gonna be fun to put back in, that's for sure. But I held on to this to figure out where all these little light bulbs go because I went and got a whole bunch of new ones for the new harness. And this should help me try to figure out where all these connections go on the new harness to the cluster. And then over here we have my desk which is just covered in cluster parts. But this is the cluster itself. I changed out the fuel gauge already. The ignition switch has changed as well as the key cylinder. So brand new key and everything. Whoa, just like that. And then these are the two door locks. I'll put those on soon. As you can see, the light switch is not there because I got a new one and I've yet to put it in. This was the old guy right here. See how nice and corroded and nice and colorful that thing is. This is how it worked. Oh, okay, come on, there it goes. So in this position right here, this knob would be basically flush with the cluster and everything else on it. And then you pull it out that way to get the lights to come on and then you twist it to get it to be dimmer or brighter on the dash. But as you can see, this thing looks terrible. So I got a new one. And then over here we have basically like the main piece of the cluster, which includes the speedometer, tachometer, uh, odometer, and that's the trip meter right there. Now there was nothing wrong with the speedometer or the tachometer. But if you guys remember, the odometer has read 11,648 miles for I think like 50 years. So we wanted to figure out what was wrong with that. I took this over to Sean's house. We took it apart in his garage. I also took over there another speedometer that came with the other cluster. If you guys watched the video before this, you'll know I went to my mom's house, went in the attic, found some old Corvette parts. One thing I saw and I went back for later was a 64 speedometer. That way we could take it apart and figure out 
maybe we could figure out from that one what's wrong with this one. And that's exactly what happened. So this is the other 64 speedometer right there. I'll show you the issue that this speedometer and the one that was in the car both had, but I just want to show you this real quick. It takes like five different gears to get the speedometer gear to turn the odometer gear. I feel like that's way too many gears and that's why one of them went bad. So this is what we got. This is spun by the speedometer. So that spins just like that. And that spins a gear down here, right there, if you can see that. And then that gear goes over to here and it spins this gear in the corner, which spins this gear up here, which turns this, which turns the odometer. So that's a lot of different gearing to make that work. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, you can see it. The gear that wore out is the first gear that this thing touches. You can see how those teeth are all worn down in the center, that gear underneath this guy right here. So the gear in this speedometer is messed up, but the gear in the other speedometer looks the exact same. So obviously this is a common issue and I got a gear for it. Like I said before, one of the best things about having an old American muscle car is you're almost guaranteed to be able to get parts for it. They're just gonna be pricey, but you can probably get parts for it. And Zip Corvette came in clutch yet again. This is a brand new gear for the odometer. So once I figure out how to take that out and not break anything, the gear will go in and then my odometer should work perfectly. Which I can't tell you how exciting that actually is because not seeing those numbers turn for the past 20 years, I'm just really used to say 11,648 miles. That's like, that's how many miles the car has. That's just, it's always in my head. It's not how many miles the car has, but it's how many miles the cluster says. And I've always seen that number. That number's always been there. So it's gonna be pretty wild to see that thing click over the first time. And especially if this is all getting done by the rally, it's gonna click over like another three, 4,000 miles, which is awesome. So yeah, that is the updates on the cluster and the wiring situation on the car. Uh, hopefully everything goes together well and everything works and all that stuff, but I still gotta do a couple things, take a couple things apart, put it back together and it'll be ready to go back in the car. All right, so what are we gonna get into today? Well, like I said, short little video, probably gonna do one thing today, but it's a pretty important thing. We're gonna pull the rear differential on the Corvette. Let's go under the car and show you guys what the whole setup looks like under there. All right, here's what we're looking at right here. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So we have this cross member right here and it's got two bolts, one right there and one right there. So the rear cover of the rear differential is pretty heavy duty and that's how the differential is mounted. So it has four bolts that go up into this cross member. So it kind of hangs there and that's how it's bolted to the rest of the car. And then the suspension is bolted to the bottom of that. So right here we would normally have like a 80 pound nine leaf leaf spring that goes side to side. But years ago I replaced it with this uh, carbon ceramic one right here. I think it's carbon ceramic. It's carbon something. Carbon composite? Maybe it's that but I replaced it with this one. It's a lot lighter and does the same job and all that stuff. So luckily all this stuff that I need to take off uh, is relatively new and it should come off no problem. So I got to detach the spring on each side right there and there. And then there's four bolts, lower that down, the spring should come down. And then also the half shafts. We got to undo the half shafts from the differential itself, which means we got to undo these. It's <laughs> This is so easy, like my hand can just like go grab it. No other car I've ever worked on has been this, like you can just see the part that you need to work on. It's right there. I need, know I need to undo that, 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 and then it just comes off. Like, guys, if you're, I, I, I'll say this. If you've never taken apart a car, you've, you're you into cars, but you don't know how to work on a car. You, you They're really intimidating to you to work on and all that stuff. I get it. Get an old car. I'm dead serious. Get an old car. It'll be so simple to work on. You won't be looking at a bunch of, vacuum hoses and wires and all that stuff it's so easy it's so straightforward i mean i i have a gm in front of me but i'm sure fords are just as simple and all that stuff to work on so if you guys are looking for a project but you don't want to like get in over your head just get an old car you can't ruin it especially if it's a beater all you can do is make it nicer and then you learn you learn how stuff works you learn how stuff goes together all that so if you guys want a project car and you're a little intimidated by the newer stuff, just get something old. Get something old. Something from the 60s or 70s. Late 70s, early 80s, they get a little, you know, all those emissions and everything. Maybe don't mess with those. But seriously, just get an old car. I highly recommend it. Anyway, let's get cracking. So let's get some tools start taking this thing apart. Oh, and then also... 
this is the front mount right here for the rear differential. It's got this kind of sandwich mount, kind of puck mount, I guess. It looks pretty, pretty easy to take apart. I almost forgot I got to undo the U-joint on the drive shaft. Actually, I need to just get the drive shaft out of there altogether. It's not going back in, so. What the hell? I'm just noticing stuff when I'm looking at it. Sorry. Look at that. That is not the proper nut for that. That one looks okay, but that one, what the dickens are we doing here, folks? Am I missing any other bolts? Anything else look weird? All right, I brought a bunch of tools. I don't know if this is all the ones I need. Oh, I should do the freaking drive shaft first. Duh. Let's see, what size are you? Three quarter? Hell yeah, brother. So it's getting looser just by hitting it with the gun, but I cannot get this thing up here. All right, struggling with that for like five minutes too long. I just remembered there's like a, I don't know what you would call it, a modification to make it easier to work on the car. That's what I'm going to call it. I'm going to guess this is from the race car days or something like that. And just to give you an example, you know how on F bodies, or I guess there's a bunch of different cars that do it. Well, on some cars to get to like the fuel pump or something like that, there is a panel on the inside of the car. You pull up the rear seat or something. The panel unscrews and you can get to the pump right there. Other cars, like 4th Gen Camaros and stuff like that, you have to drop the entire tank, which is a big issue. But guys know exactly where to cut to put a window so they can access the pump. That's kind of what they did here with the rear end. I don't remember how many years ago it was, but I was taking the carpet out for some reason. I was cleaning up the car, vacuum something or something like that. And I came upon this and I was like, what the hell is this? And it had duct tape over it. I took the duct tape off and it revealed this. This is like a, that's like cardboard and fiberglass combined to give a little hat to that right there. But if you take the hat off, you get access to the rear differential right there, or the, at least the U-joint right there. Like super, super easy to get to. Pretty sure this hole is not supposed to be here. And honestly, I don't even know if I'm gonna fix it all the way. I might just do a better hat like this and actually put it on there nicely. Cause this is actually really easy to access things. Now I'm really just guessing, but I think this hole was made so you could just access the rear end very quickly and change rear, rear differentials very quickly. And I think that because there's a rear differential over here that was on the floor of my parents' garage for 30, 40, 50 years, right here, and it's a 410. The one in the car right now is a 370. That's a 410. That's quite the gear difference, which tells me they were using the 410 for certain races and then the 370 for other races or for street driving. And they did that so they could swap it out quickly. In my mind, that's what that says. Don't know if that's all accurate, but that's what it says to me. So this is going to make it crazy easy to undo the drive shaft. Still got to figure out how to get the lower mount out, but maybe I could, that'll open up quite a bit once I take this out. shaft is disconnected. I can probably pull that out the front now. Drive shaft is out and this is the best part. That is the top of the bolt I could not get underneath. Literally this window had to have been for race car things. That is the only thing I can think of because that makes that one so easy to get to now. Just got to get a three quarter down there and then zip her off and we're good to go. Ow. There we go. 
now starting on the half shafts. Let's do the half shafts. All right, the camera died, but as you can see, I have four of them right there, which means the half shafts are completely disconnected. And I think when I drop the differential down, that's when half shafts will separate from the axles here. Let's see what else, what else, what else? Probably take the spring out, jack up this side, let that loose and then let it down. Shouldn't be too difficult to get out. Should just be these four bolts. That's oh, a little loose. Why are you making that a 13 16 homie? Why are we doing that today? Just woke up and chose violence? There is nothing more frustrating than having what you think is all the tools under the car with you. Only to find out you're missing one. All right, here we go. Whoa, there we go. Very light. Maybe 20 pounds? Not bad at all. Get that guy out. is gonna be a pain in the dick to get out right there. Hopefully just a punch and a hammer and it'll pop out on the other side, but we'll see. Dude. Well, there we go. Probably need a new castle nut, but at least that moved. Boom! All right. There we go. Got him out. Oh, he's got like a neural deal over there. That's probably why. Boom. That's out. What else do we need to drop it? Uh, I think, honestly, just that bolt right there and that bolt right there. And then this thing should drop down. I think that's everything. So this is how we're going to do the rear differential. Before I do anything on any one of my cars, as I always look it up online. You can call me a YouTube mechanic if you want to, but it's just sometimes people have quicker ways to do things, smarter ways to do things, whatever. 
I go watch videos for basically anything I'm going to do on a car and then get like a baseline for like, oh, okay, I could do that or attack it this way, that type of thing. And there was a suggestion for when you drop the rear differential. If you're like me and you're at this point, you have the only thing holding the differential up is this cross member. You want to loosen that bolt, loosen this bolt, but don't take them all the way out. You want to back them out maybe three eighths of an inch, half inch, something like that. And then we're going to take a pry bar and pry it down so it kind of pops this loose. And then we'll put a jack under here and lower it down. That's the game plan anyway. Here we go. Did that just come all the way out? Holy sh! I thought I broke it. It came out so damn fast. I'm not even on three. Wow. That was a little loose. All right, I'm going to put this guy back in. Give him a couple threads so I can knock this thing down like I said I was going to do. That thing literally just like popped right out. Let's see, this. Let's see what this one does. That one popped out really easy too. I'm not complaining that stuff's easy to come out, but it's, it is surprising. So this is the connection we want to break right here. So we have the bolt backed out, like I said, maybe three eighths of an inch, half inch, something like that. We want to put this bar in here. Let's see if we can separate this a little bit. Now I do have a crowbar. This side's popped out. All right, I think that should do it. We got the jack under here supporting the rear differential. I'm gonna go ahead and back these bolts out the rest of the way. Okay. Whoa, okay. That was, that came down a little faster than I thought it was going to. Oh, there it goes. I need to reposition this jack. It looks like it wants to fall that way. <laughs> Please don't fall. Those, ax those axles should come out. The differential is being supported by the uh, the U-joints. Apparently they are fond of one another. Let's go break that loose. There we go. It's loose. Don't fall, please. Please don't fall. Please don't fall. Oh, sh no. Don't fall. Okay. Okay, come on. Let's drop her down. There we go. There we go. Boom. It's out. Well, it's, yeah, it's out. It, it's out. So basically, just have four more bolts, two in there, two in there, to disconnect the cross member from the differential. Then I take the cover off the differential and the axles out of the differential and swap them over to the new differential and then put that guy back in. That is gonna do it for this video. That's all the updates, that's everything I've done so far. I'm gonna go inside, shower, cool off, and pack for Bonneville, because apparently I'm leaving tomorrow morning at like 5 a.m. So, with that being said, thank you guys very much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Hit that bell, get a notification every time I drop a new video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.